Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a recent and currently reading video. I just ate some carrots and I feel like I have stuff on my face, but anyway, it's been a while since I filmed one of these and that's mostly because I have not been getting very much reading done. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. I've been reading, but I have not been finishing anything and we'll get into that in a minute. But first, before we talk about the books, I want to do a little housekeeping um, first. You may have noticed in my last couple of videos that I have um, found out how to insert pictures of book covers in my videos. And that is because before Christmas, Mora over at Books Like Whoa had done a video called something like How Do You Booktube or something like that. And she had been talking about technical issues related to doing booktube videos and in the comment section one of her commenters talked about a piece of video editing software called Shotcut. It's a free um, open source video editing software available online that works with um, Windows or Mac I believe. Um, but I use a Windows computer. So I downloaded it and tried it. There was a like a 25 minute video that I found right on the download page um, to explain, it was like an introductory, introductory video that talked about how to use the software. Super easy and I just started using it and it's fabulous. It's so easy to use and it's really upped my editing game. So I'm super excited about that and just wanted to point it out for anyone that may have noticed that I've suddenly started inserting photos into my videos. The second piece of housekeeping is the fact that I haven't completed any books yet in January. As I'm filming this, this is January 13th, Sunday, two weeks into the month and I'm feeling extremely weirded out, stressed out, uh, whatever you want to call it, that I haven't actually finished any books yet um, in 2019. I do have a couple of books to talk about because I finished two books at the end of 2018 that I haven't yet talked about on this channel and then I'll talk about what I'm currently reading. But the fact of the matter is I haven't yet finished anything and it makes me feel very um, weird and stressed out. So, and we'll get into why I haven't finished anything as I talk about my current reads, but just wanted to point that out and uh, ask you guys, are any of you out there in a situation where you haven't yet finished any books in January? Um, and I don't know why we all make like the beginning of the year such a big deal um, because it really isn't. I mean, we're just all still reading and we, you know, everybody likes to start out the year with like a special book or a book that they know is going to be a five star read for them or something along those lines. I hear a lot of people talk about that and I feel like sometimes the new year is a bit of added pressure on us as readers that we, we're we putting on ourselves that isn't real. It's another psychological thing that readers have. So trying not to let it get me too freaked out. But anyway, that's where we are. So for the books that I did finish at the end of 2018, the first one was this book, Moxie. Jennifer Mathau is the author. This is a YA fiction uh, book about a... Um, basically about a young girl who doesn't really she has a group of friends and she sort of is flying out of the under the radar at her school um but it's becoming more and more apparent to her that she is not willing to sort of keep flying under the radar and sort of staying out of people's notices because in her high school the sports teams, the jocks or whatever you want to call them, the the popular kids who are also into sports um, the men are very sexist and degrading to the women in their school and um, sp particularly the football team and the administration and the teachers do not do anything to curtail this activity and it's just becoming more and more awful for the young women at the school to have to put up with this kind of environment with you know just sexual comments all the time, sexist comments, just disgusting um, grabbing and groping going on in the hallway and all that kind of crap that happens in high school. And so this, our main character, who I've forgotten her name already, Vivian, decides to start a zine. And she anonymously starts writing the zine and leaving it in the girls' bathroom that's all about, you know, girls taking control of their own destinies and girl power and how it's not okay for the boys to treat them this way and how, 
you know, they're just going to start doing little small acts of um, defiance and uh, resistance, basically. And the zine sort of um, starts a whole bunch of activities happening amongst the young women in her school. This is a really great um, book. It's a lot about girl empowerment. It's a lot about how um, you never know what anybody else's story is or what problems anybody else is experiencing just from looking at them on the outside. Um, and our main character, Vivian, really finds out not only a lot about herself, but a lot about her friends and the other young women that go to her school that she didn't know before. Great story. Um, just touched my heart and was a feel-good read and a wonderful thing to end the year with. A book that was not a feel-good read but was very important and I'm glad I read it is this nonfiction book, The Fifth Risk by Michael Lewis. You will know Michael Lewis from popular nonfiction titles such as The Blind Side and Moneyball and um, oh, I read the one about the financial collapse last year. Uh, completely blanking on the name of that one. I will try to write it down below when it comes to me. Um, but this book is a very short nonfiction book um, all about uh, how the government collects big data and how that data is used to run various different programs and companies and parts of American life and how all of that is at risk because the Trump administration either has put into positions of power, people who know absolutely nothing about the agencies that they're directing, or because um, they just don't care about the information that these agencies are collecting and what that information is used for. Or they want to take the information that these government agencies are collecting, that they have been collecting for the good of all Americans, and privatize it and make it something that only a few people can make a profit on. Um, this is all about, you know, departments in, of the government that we don't usually think about, like Department of Commerce, which really isn't about business at all, but is more, that's where the weather um, information is collected and uh, things like that. You know, things, parts of the government that we don't often think about or that we don't even know exist and the important work they do and how that work is in peril because of the incompetent people who are currently running our government. Um, and that is not to say that the individuals within these agencies, you know, the day-to-day -day workers within those agencies are incompetent. No, no, no. The people who are running those agencies all the way up to the White House are incompetent. And that's what's dangerous about it. Um, excellent read. Uh, Michael Lewis really knows how to tell a story. Um, and it's something as, as could potentially be as dry and as boring as government agencies that collect data. Um, he certainly knows how to make those things interesting. So I enjoyed that one as well. Now, for what I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading four books, um, and two of them are humongous chunkers, and that is a, a huge reason as to why I am not um, completing anything. So I came into 2019 with two books that I had already started in 2018, uncomplete, incomplete, um, and the first one of those is, of course, my biography of Grant by Ron Chernow. Um, I am over 400 pages into this 800 page biography. I'm really enjoying it. It's highly detailed. I'm at the point in um, the story where Grant has been assigned to be the general in charge of the entire war effort um, instead of just in the western part of the um, theater over by the Mississippi River, which is where he started. And so now we're sort of into the last year or so of the war. Um, but there is a lot of detail in this book and a lot about battles and generals and so many general names. Oh my God, it's like overwhelming at times. So you really can't read this in huge gulps. You really have to take your time with it. And I am enjoying it. And so I don't want to just rush through it and then not get all of the benefit of having read this book. So I'm continuing on with this, but it is a priority because I would like to finish it. I would like to finish it in January, if at all possible. The other super large book that I'm reading is my audiobook of The Stand, which is something like 48 hours long. Um, it is the uncut version of The Stand by Stephen King. And I, of course, it's one of my favorite books of all time. I've read it multiple times in the past, but I haven't read it for a really long time. And I had never done it on audio. And so it was available to me in my library system. And I thought, 
it would be great to just listen to it for once. And it is really long. Like <laughs> Everybody knows it's really long, but it is super long on audio. Even speed it up, which I do listen to it at like 1.25 speed or one and a half speed. I can't remember what it, I'm currently listening to it as. Um, so I'm working my way through that and I am, uh, I am over halfway through that book as well, but again, it's just it's just time. I just it's gonna take time to get through it, and I am enjoying it. Um, although I kind of wish it wasn't the uncut version because I'm finding this time around that the places where this story could have been edited down and what were and was edited down when it was originally published, there was a reason for that. <laughs> Stephen King can be very long-winded. I'm well aware of it, and and on audiobook in this particular. Um, novel, it's very clear where some things could have been left out. I'm also um, participating currently um, in two buddy reads. The first one is of this uh, work of Canadian uh, fiction. This is Wild Geese by Martha Ostenso. I am reading this with Sean from Sean the Book Maniac. And this is a book that was first published in something like 1925. It takes place in... Um, Oh, I want to say Manitoba. Yes, Manitoba. Um, on the prairie, and we're following a uh, a family, um, a pioneer family in a very, very, very small community. Um, and this one particular family is housing the um, school teacher this year. And so we're kind of getting the story from the perspective of all of these family members as they're living their lives under a very domineering father. Um, and each of the family members uh, responds to this domineering father in their own way. Lind, the um, school teacher, is sort of our, um, our observer of this family dynamic. The nature writing in this book is beautiful. This is like um, grown-up Laura Ingalls Wilder. You remember the, uh, I don't even remember which book it's in, but there is in the Laura Ingalls Wilder stories a part where Laura goes away and lives with another family and is a school teacher when she's a teenager herself. And this book <laughs> is very evocative of the feelings I had when reading that book, but also like just with so much more added depth and emotion and beautiful writing and, and very, um, the landscape is just so uh, evocatively drawn and just everything. I'm loving this book so much. So glad that Sean um, suggested that we read it together and um, am about oh almost halfway through it now and going to continue to read that with Sean. The other book that I'm currently reading is Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. This is one of the titles off my um, recommended reading list for college bound students, that classic list, classics list that I've been working on for my entire adult life. Um, I'm down to the last eight titles and this is the first one I'm tackling in 2019 in the hopes of cleaning this list up and completing it. And I am buddy reading Gulliver's Travels with Patrice. Um, and I would say that uh, I am not particularly, in, I would not say that I am enjoying Gulliver's Travels. I'm finding it, the humor to be very sophomoric and um, basically 12 year old boy bathroom humor. And I kind of wonder who this story, what age level this story was written for. I know it's a satire of English um, culture and government at the time. And sometimes that shines through very clearly and then other times it's just like oh my god this book is just like I said 12 year old boy bathroom humor. <laughs> I have learned way more than I needed to know about this narrator's um, bodily functions let's just say that uh, and it's an easy enough read I don't find it difficult to read it's just not a book that I'm enjoying so we're in we just finished part three um, it's it's broken up into four parts where um, Gulliver uh, visits a different, basically a different land, a fictional land in each of the parts, although in part three visited three fictional lands. Anyway, it's too too hard to go into here, but I'm just going to leave it at not my favorite classic, um, but I'm going to finish it. Patrice and I will probably be wrapping that book up by the end of next week. So that's where I'm at with my reading. Um, two huge chunkers of 
books that are slowing me down a little bit, and then two buddy reads, which I um, am so happy to be doing buddy reads again because I love them so much, and you guys know that. Uh, but I am feeling anxious that I haven't completed a book, so looking forward um, to this week, and hopefully I will finish a book, at least one this week, and um, I'm supposed to be starting Another buddy read on the 15th with Alba. Um, we're going to read The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. So that would be a great nonfiction read to add into the mix. Um, but that is where I am at. I hope that you are all having um, some time to read in January and that you're reading some good books. Um, and until the next video, I'll talk with you later.